this edition of Cameron's Corner. <laughs> explaining Too much how, coffee. how we're going to do a setup and intonation on this particular bad boy, but in general, you know, when you want to have one done. Our philosophy. Our philosophy. Someone on Facebook might disagree. What makes us a little <laughs> bit different than everybody else. Yeah. We want you to get the best care that you can get when you bring your instrument in here. <laughs> Zang. <laughs> Why do we actually <clears throat> adjust intonation? Why is it adjustable? Why is it... Why does it need to be adjustable? Well, because you do have an instrument where you can play with different thicknesses of strings, which essentially adjusts. The... Um, I would agree with that. Right. So there's different thicknesses of strings, but right. let's look even more basic than that. When when this fretboard is cut, it's cut mathematically on the same coefficient. So we divide the scale length by 17.817. We get a new one. We keep dividing by 17.817. Here's the problem with that: the string is going uphill. Mm -hmm. So the string length which is what we're trying to count for. The string length, when you press down at the third fret, let's just say the string stretches 5%. But if you go to the 12th fret, because that string is higher off, mm -hmm. that string has to stretch much further to get, to down, get to down, down there. Its position. So now we get in this issue where because it's progressively getting higher, which decreases our potential for fret buzz, right. We now have to adjust these saddles to account for that. So it's really, in my mind, it's a combination of a thicker string, but also because the height is the going uphill. The... Yeah, if, okay. if somehow it was more like a keyboard instrument and everything was on the same plane, I don't believe we'd it have wouldn't to. Yeah, I don't, near but, that much. but what you need to know is that whenever you're matching tones of the 12th fret, really all you did was move the problem because there's no such thing as a perfectly intonated pluck string instrument. No. Because of that, because and because this headstock moves a little bit, if you buy into that, which I believe firmly, um, you know, when you press down at the twelfth fret, things have to move. Your headstock moves a little bit. Things have to happen. So we have to adjust this based on that. So, you know, your compensation. I had a I had a fifteen string instrument that I had to compensate yeah. with, and I got everything right at the twelfth fret. And the problem was, at five and seven. It was off. It was just a little off. It was just at, now. If you look up the overtone series, it's pretty complex. Um, when you play one note, there's this cascade of like yeah. a million notes that yeah. happen. It's yeah. kind of it's very like almost a physics type thing. Yeah, and it's like quantum physics actually. Like you know, you, when you understand it, you don't understand it. Right. But anyways, what I ended up doing to that 15 string instrument was, I actually adjusted things to where it it really played in tune around five and seven because I mean. When you talk about an A bar chord or B, that's something you're going to play. D minor, you know, right. you're going to play that in a lot of songs. He's probably not barring everything down and playing a lot of lead on a 15 string instrument. <laughs> so I'm thinking, you know, and I, I would say a bass is the same thing. Like, I mean, if you get to a point where you know you've got really good intonation, you know, up here ninth, eleventh fret on you know on those low strings, five, you know. You've got to find out what kind of player is going to be playing it. That's why it's good to know your customer. Right. right. Because, you know, people on a classical guitar, people will, you know, they'll gripe and moan about, you know, the, the, the 18th fret on the second string. And, you know, well, how many songs do you know that actually, actually played that note? That. Yeah. And if you do, it was probably Rodrigo, and that note was a 32nd note. <laughs> and, okay. You know, like, I can live with that as a guitar right. guy. You know, I can live with the fact that, okay, that 18th note on the second string is a little sharp. Yeah, but the thing is, if you're talking about, like, the third fret, first string, that's you're going to be playing that all the time. Right. You're, you're going to be living there, you, you know. Want, you or the eighth the, fret, you know, that G note, you, you want, you know. You want the area where you're spending most of your time to be the area that's most in tune. Yeah, so fret. so really what we're battling is three things. And this is, this is what we want the customer to know. Number one, you've got different thickness strings. And a flat wound string with a different core right. is going to act different than a round wound, Very all this stuff. Yeah. So we're tuning this intonation to the string brand, to the string type and the string gauge. Then number two, we're tuning it to the frequency of the neck, which has, like when you change your truss rod adjustment, that neck's gonna bend differently, it's mm -hmm. gonna give differently. Right. And uh, so now we've got to actually play it. Sometimes you have to play two notes at a time because that changes how that thing torques. Right. So that's another thing we're taking into account. And then, you know, number three, we're taking into account the action. And if someone likes higher action, it changes everything versus someone, someone who likes, likes lower, lower action. action yeah. So whenever people just go, oh, all you got to do is go here, hit the harmonic of this, and I'm like, well, I don't know if that's a one-size-fits-all issue. So, I mean... It's a, it's a one-size-fits-most most of the time. I think, what it's, I think what it is is a baseline. Yeah. 
I think that's the best way to put it is like if you get if you play your harmonic at the 12th fret on each one of those strings and then you press down the note and you fret the note and it's you know within a a cent or two right then I think you're you're in a baseline point where you can start and you still need to go through and play the instrument and see how it intonates in these different situations because right. you know what if that harmonic's great on the 12th fret but then you you go here and you play a D at the 5th fret on the on the you know fourth the third string here and it sounds and it's off yeah well, you got to change it right because they're going to play that note that's a lot that's you know that's going to be you know that's going to be in that note so yeah you, this is not an absolute thing this is static and i would say that beware of the people that make it a this is how you do it right you know we just go there and do this and that i mean you know it's like it, it's like a front end alignment for a car if you it's going to uh, vary depending on well, the customer's let's, driving let's, let's say we and... align the front end of my chevelle and you know, the ride height is 5.5 .5 inches and the engine, it has aluminum cylinder heads and we love it. And then let's just say we, we change something on the engine, we add weight, which right. changes the ride height. Okay. Well, now that's going to change the, the frequency of the springs and then everything's, everything moves. Now. Everything changes. Everything right? changes. Yeah. Same thing here. You know, if you go from an Ernie Ball string to a D'Addario string, I firmly believe the tension slightly is different. The way that harmonics of that string are different. There, I don't see any way they could make them all absolutely the same. Right. I don't think that a manufacturer or, would want to do that. I think they kind of pride themselves on all being a little bit different. That's right, different right. Different Which is why people right. have a preference right. for different, different strings, right? Slinky sound so, versus so you know, the nice thing about this instrument is this guy likes the Ernie Ball flat wound strings. The bad thing is it started having intonation problems out of the blue in one spot, and it was only on one string. So how can that be? The frets didn't move. You know, so it makes it makes the problem more did difficult. Did he just change string gauges? I think it, I think the string gave up. I think it's a crappy string, but I don't know. I mean, you know, when people come to me, they go, "Man, I just changed my strings and my guitar is all out of whack. There's something wrong with my guitar." No, there's probably something wrong with your strings. Could be because that's the ten dollar part. Your your frets can't physically move, but that's you know you that's can. why you know. It's not like an oil change. You can't just bring it in and then pick it up in two hours. Yeah, right. We got to figure out what's going on with it, which is the difference is. between what we do and what you know. What's well, the difference do. between doing doing a setup versus just a restring? I mean, we, anybody can restring an instrument, but I believe firmly it takes three to four string changes of the exact same string on the exact same guitar with the exact same player to get a setup right. Right. So I don't think. Someone changes gauges of strings. We need to keep it for a week or two. Yeah. See what they did, and then they really need to go home and play it. Go through another see string change. Then, see what yeah. moves. Like that Ibanez. You know, the yeah. tremolo moved. Right. And the guy's freaked out. I'm like, it's all right. We change. But, we're changing strings anyway. It's no yeah, big deal. It happens. Yeah. Everything's static <laughs> on this. But people are like, no, no, my, my my tuners must be slipping. All this stuff. No, no, probably not. That's it's a gear likely. that's well, it would have never pulled up to tune if that was the yeah. situation. Well, I need to put graphite in the nut. No, probably not. You know, I think you would literally hear it squeaking in there. Yeah. You know, it's just it's a ten dollar set of strings, and um, they give. I mean, I've had a bad batch of strings when in college. Whenever we started yeah. buying strings in bulk, you know, me and some guys got together. This was before Amazon. Right. I mean, how how long did they sit on the shelf at Amazon before before you pay three dollars yeah. a pack of strings exactly. instead of seven dollars a pack? And when were they manufactured? I don't think they do a born on date like they do with beer. No. But you know, there's a reason they started doing that with beer, right? Yeah. Because old beer skunk. Yeah. Right? It's nasty. Well, they ought to do it with the strings. strings are, well, you got to think that the tensile strength of the metal is weakening the whole time it's sitting there. Whether it's exposed to the elements or wrapped up in a pack, and you stick it in a cold warehouse, it's going to deal with that for however long until you send it out to a customer. Well, when you take metallurgy, when you, when you go ahead and talk about like, in a machinist standpoint, or even a civil engineer sort of standpoint, when they're putting together a bridge or something, and they're torquing down a bolt that's really, someone's life depends on this bolt. Right. You know, they might sit there all day and bring the bolt in and torque it with a really precise instrument, pull it out, measure string stretch, do it to another one. I mean, right. measure thread pitch stretch, sorry, not string right. stretch, thread pitch. We're talking about the thread on a bolt, and it's bolt. much better, you know, metal, metal than manufacturing. We're talking about the nips, yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? And, and they want to know because they want to know it, where's the tensile failure or, or something of this. And engineers know may, way more of that than you right. than I do. Right. But all it would take was you know one engineer like really measuring these strings and going, well, it's a static component. It's 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 more like a windshield wiper blade. You know, as soon as you start using it, it starts wearing out. It starts wearing out. I think yeah. so. Yeah. So in a nutshell, that's what we're trying to decode. And then once you know the instrument, 
you know the customer, you know how they play and where they play, you can make the instrument work for them, which is our goal.